Okay, welcome guys. We are going to look at uh, here.co, their uh, broken bow reg A offering. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at is just the pictures of it. Um, and we'll, we'll dive into that shortly. Um, my name is Corey. I um, have extensive history um, as a uh, short-term rental um, analyst and also um, operating in uh, the role of uh, head uh, short-term rental acquisitions uh, for a uh, fractional um, vacation rental uh, company, not here.co, but uh, one very, very similar to them. So I uh, have extensive knowledge of of what um, these companies do, how they operate, and um, what their primary goal is, which is not always um, in the best interest of their customers. Um, so first, when we're looking at uh, Here.co, Here.co is a um, interesting platform. Um, the first initial thoughts you'll see is they, they look very um, modern, very beautiful. Um, luxury stylish um, but they're more designed as how you'd want your home to look like um, as opposed to what a Airbnb property is supposed to look like um, as you can see there's really no wow factor in any of this um, you know where are people going to be taking pictures and and tagging the property and, and all that stuff you know those those Instagram type um, type features that that homes need to have so um, it definitely is lacking and and that's not just in this property that's in um, every single property that uh, that they um, they really uh, have offered so far um, and I'm not sure if they just have a um, designer who is more has a background in residential as opposed to Airbnb um, but that's something they're gonna have to fix if they want to um, to uh, move forward in addition to the fact that they need to be choosing um, better properties as opposed to just properties in um, in places that uh, have a, a name like Broken Bow or Big Bear or um, um, wherever they wherever they did other ones I don't exactly remember all of them but um, if you're a short-term rental expert you probably know that you would right now you'd never um, invest in Broken Bow it's uh, it's not a great place to invest um, right now uh, for several reasons um, one being that it's uh, it's on the downward trend um, not just like uh, many places are, are on the downward trend from like 2021 levels it just it's it's not a great place for vacationers it has vacationers but it's not not one of those places that is a must go um, so if we just go through the um, their website here and, and where you would buy shares um, the big thing that a lot of these fractional companies have um, is they have a lack of details um, about the finances and about um, returns and all that stuff you know they have an overview of you know the area okay great um, when we get to financing they you know estimate a first payment okay sounds good and then they have this financing 50% loan to value interest rate 10.25 and a one-year loan okay so the first thing you should be thinking about is well what happens at the end of that one year you know where's where what, what what's the plan and this is you know I, I think the difference between um, more sophisticated investors and newer investors new investors might not even be like might not even be stopped by any of this because they just don't you know quite understand it but you know I well, the the main thing here is when this one year loan term comes up there they're, they're gonna put it into a uh, portfolio loan um, um, uh, type of uh, package um, most likely um, that was that was what what we did and um, you know getting the interest rate down to you know probably in the, the 7.5 range um, right now so lack of information here is kind of uh, disappointing um, the market <laughs> I you know th this is so subjective right here um, and it's just it's it's nothing that's really gonna help you um, 
they you know every every um, short term rental um, company will you know say they have you know their own proprietary technology to do it. I'll tell you um, uh, they don't. Um, you know, technically anything's proprietary. Um, you know, you take someone else's data, you times it by, you know, 1.0001 to get just a minor change and you can call that, you know, proprietary. So um, anytime someone says they have proprietary um, technology, um, I think you, uh, you're, um, you're not fraud, sorry. I don't, I don't want to say fraud, but your, um, your senses should pop up that, you know, maybe something's a little off. Okay, the next they do um, the ADR, the average daily rate, the uh, OCC, which is the average occupancy, and then the average revenue. Now, they're getting these numbers um, not based off of any comps they've pulled and run. They are purely, if you come down to the footnotes, getting this from um, AirDNA, and they're just using the 75th percentile for the four bedroom homes in the uh, Broken Bow area. Um, why this is an issue. One, um, you know, the 75th percentile isn't, isn't going to be an issue. Um, you know, the, you know, even though this home is lacking a lot of, uh, those wow factors, it, it will still, um, still should get close to that, um, in a typical setting. However, if you know Broken Bow, you know there's lake, so there's lakefront property, you know, versus non-lakefront property. Um, so all these things play into that factor. Now, this average revenue isn't just doing um, homes that are exactly like this home. You know, it's not, it's not just calculating homes that are non-waterfront property with hot tubs or, or you know, whatever. It's taking all the homes in that area. So it's including the waterfront homes, which are gonna have a far different um, revenue than a non-waterfront home. And the, the main thing here is it doesn't average out because you're taking the 75th percentile. You're not taking the average, which could dump some and, and gain some. You're taking that top 25% homes. So um, personally, what I would have liked to do um, is to uh, show comparable properties, um, show what the, um, the data is uh, saying those properties are getting. Um, but this is the shortcut way of doing it. And sadly, um, and, and I've seen it in, in the company I worked for, um, shortcuts are the standard, um, whether that's because of a, a lack of knowledge um, of the short-term rental market, which just so you know, you would think everyone that's you know works for these companies has you know short-term expertise. They don't. Um, you know, many of them are more hired for because of the previous employer employers they worked for, so that you know the uh, so that when they're trying to go after capital funds and private funds, that they could say, oh well, we have you know this person running our real estate and he worked for, you know, XYZ company, um, and you know, yada, yada, yada. So you have to be careful with that. And, and that'll get into, you know, when we talk about the fees in a second, why the, some of the fees are so high. But so that's that lack of details, um, lack of, you know, accuracy. Um, it, it is a little misleading, um, especially depending on, um, which property they, they have a, um, uh, an A-frame in, uh, in the Smoky Mountains that uses you know the 75th percentile for that area of course there's a big difference between you know homes that have views and homes that don't and and that was a home that didn't have views and it's still it's just taking it's taking the higher luxury homes and 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 playing with the numbers so um it'll be interesting to see what what it actually hits um revenue wise um going forward and of course the zillow home value means nothing you know, Zillow I buyers, you know, failed. Um, many of those I buyer people have gone on to uh, work for, shockingly, fractional vacation rental companies. Buyer beware, guys. Um, do your homework is, is what I have to say there. Um, so that's really the only information they give on this page, which is, uh, as you can tell, pretty lacking. But let's go to the SEC filing. And this is the offer, offering circular. Uh, circular. 
um, and you know I feel I have filled these out um, with with this stuff because it's something that you have to do with the SCC so this is the series 14 this is the broken bow one um, and uh, before we actually get into the, the um, fees and stuff they do here let's go to um, this is the same filing but it just gives what what fees they charge so they have their property management fee okay uh, property management fee they say ranges from 25 to 40 percent of the gross receipts of the series um, depending on what they do for this broken bow one I think they said 25 um, and, and I'll get into more of those details what that actually means when we get to our analysis next you have the asset management fee um, which is a 1% annualized um, of the asset value as of the last day immediately preceding the quarter. Um, yeah, th this is a, an issue I know. Um, the, the asset management fee is not an issue, but I've seen some really weird things where, where um, they say they're gonna get like four, um, for um, third party party evaluations, um, you know, for one for each quarter throughout the year. Um, to me, that doesn't make sense. Um, that's just wasting more money on those um, assessments and valuations, which isn't coming out of the, the um, their pocket. It's coming out of the returns that would normally go to the investors. So um, that's not the best way to do it. Um, the best way to do it would just be. Um, how how we do it was which is a one percent on um on uh, the the value um of the house um after um a certain amount of years the first se several years are just on um essentially the purchase price with the renovations if we have any um and then finally they have their uh service fee um so what's a service fee <laughs> service fee is essentially um the fee that they can accept, um, you know, basically lumping it on top, um, raising that money uh, against investors, you know, um, on top of the home price um, that goes to them for the acquisition of the home. Um, so we'll get into exactly what that is, but there's, it says, it depends on the series, but 10 to 15%, okay? Um, that's excessive in in our opinion and we'll get into why that we believe that is excessive and why they do have to charge such high fees like that um, we believe in in charging um, fees that are in line with private placement fees um, because that's what reggae was meant to be reggae is meant to get give the average citizen access to um, private placement type offerings you know non-accredited investors getting access to good alternative investments um, not not companies lumping tons of fees on it so that they can make money making money is great I don't have any problem with making money we love making money but let's let's do the right thing and make money all together okay so that's that coming back to the offering some things you'll see um, the brokerage commission that's um, the the Dalmore who does the um, the uh, the offering so who um, helps them you know raise the funds through their portals um, the net purchase price of the property 594 that is not the actual purchase price of the property as you can see down here they bought this property for 1.1 million um, plus estimated 33,000 in closing costs um, and 11,000 in financing costs costs um, so that's only 50% because they remember they're putting that 50% on on leverage on the loan uh, the next is furnishings and repair costs um, again these are um, estimated costs um, and they don't have to be 100% accurate they can overestimate um, and they all almost always well, they always do overestimate because if they don't overestimate and it comes back that the you know the furnishings and repair costs actually cost 150,000 then they would actually be liable for that extra 30,000 um, so that's why these companies will always overestimate because if they overestimate um, and say their repairs only come in at a hundred thousand they can move that 20,000 that they still collected from you guys they can just move it to the reserve fund and and have no issues 
um, service fee. Here's that service fee. So this is also called a sourcing fee, acquisition fee. Think of it that way. You know, them going out and getting the property, remodeling it, ref you know, furnishing it. Most most of the properties had didn't have any remodeling done. It was mostly furnishing. So, so that's a little different. But they are having that at one hundred and forty six thousand dollars as a sourcing fee. Fifteen point five percent of the gross proceeds is a service fee. Yikes. Yeah. Okay. And then operating reserves, that's normal. You got to have reserves in case of any um, major issue with the property. Say something happens and it needs a new roof tomorrow. You want to have those pros those funds in the reserve account so that, you know, you're not going back to investors and asking them for money. Okay. So now let's go into the actual analysis. So here's the here broken bow uh, property analysis form. Um, this is an analysis form that we use. Um, you'll never get an analysis form like this from uh, from any of these companies that do fractional um, uh, fractional vacation rentals because these they're going to keep this in their back pocket, um, hidden from um, from uh, the public. So here we go. We have a purchase price of 1.1. We have 50%. Um, uh, 50% down payment as uh, we had a 50% loan. Uh, here's that uh, down more brokerage um, fee for the portal. Um, and then we have our reserves of 77, our design and remodel of 120, and that property sourcing fee of 146. Um, these two first ones are gonna be the same. Um, this is here. The only difference is gonna be um, using the first year mortgage rate versus using that bundle that they'll they'll get into that um, portfolio loan package at probably roughly about a 7.5 over 30 years. I uh, still used their um, 75th percentile income. Why? Um, just because uh, I don't believe it'll hit that um, uh, because it's broken bow and because it's not um, it's not waterfront. It's um, it doesn't have those big pops, um, those wow factors that make people want to um, to uh, to book it. Um, so I think when during off season, it's it's going to have a lower um, a lower revenue, lower occupancy than say a property that would have those pops. Um, we have uh, the tax. Taxes are pretty low in Broken Bow, and insurance costs here. Insurance may be a little bit bit higher. It's 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 very dependent on on what insurance they use. So we'll just use um, this, which is equivalent to um, a little bit less than six thousand utilities um, and license fees, and then we'll get into the management fee. So the management fee here is uh, 0.25 percent, and that's based off of the rental income here. Um, however, if you look at the management fee, what do they take their 25% off of? They take it off of the gross receipts, not the gross rental income. And this is very important because gross receipts means almost anything that is paid by someone who's booking it on Airbnb, you know, host fees cleaning fees, all those additional fees that they're taking a percentage off of as opposed to just the daily rate. Um, so that's something that, you know, to be aware of, um, they're, they're taking money, they're taking 25% off of the gross receipts of all of them. Um, so that's a big chunk, as you can see, R&M, repair and maintenance, um, along with some additional other stuff, um, hot tub maintenance, stuff like that, or hot tub service. Uh, supplies and then the asset fee. Asset fee is the one percent, um, uh, one percent of the um, the uh, the price, the value of the asset. So now getting into like where we're talking about the summary and info, and the main thing that we're going to look at is um, is going to be the annual cash yield. So as you can see, the annual cash yield um, of one percent, and then a portfolio when it gets into that portfolio. Of um, about 2.3 percent. I bet the majority of people who invested in this um, expected a far greater return than 2.3 percent. Um, and it's it is sad that um, maybe the SEC has. 
put loopholes in um, that kind of maybe misinform a little bit um, because 2.3 is not good at all for a short-term rental. Um, you know, even you, you need to be closer, um, you know, to that 7%. Now, one, they, you know, overpaid for the property. You know, and that's not surprising too. They have a bunch of fees and three broken bows, just not that good of a, a market. Um, but as you can see, so the annual net cash flow that goes to investors is twenty, roughly twenty-two thousand. The income that the Hero.co brings in from this property is forty-nine thousand, almost double what goes, to, well, over double what goes to investors. Um, and, and we can talk about ethics and morality and stuff. Is that ethical? You know, I guess is is uh, is something that each individual uh, person will have to determine for themselves. And that's not even including you know the one hundred forty six thousand dollars service fee if they sell out their um, their offering um, that they get on top of that. Um, so you know, year one they're getting essentially um, a two hundred thousand dollar parachute, and then every year going forward, you know, somewhere around forty to fifty thousand dollars when the investors are only getting about twenty something. Um so yeah. Um and we'll talk about why why their fees are so high. But finally we'll just go over what, what Airdeed does. Airdeed does um a point uh, zero five percent service fee. So they're um more than more than half of what um, other people are. Um, and that's because they have in-house um, property uh, sourcers as opposed to um, not uh, having in-house and also having lower, lower overhead. They also charge uh, a 15% management fee. Um, and the goal is to get that even lower to uh, 10%. Um, and uh, just a side note, um, depending on some, some companies will self-manage it, some companies will, um, will contract out to a third-party host, but even if they contract out to a third-party host for 15%, they're still gonna charge that 25% and then pocket the extra 10. Um, I know that because I worked for one of these companies as the, the head of uh, short-term rental um, acquisitions. Um, and then finally, um, you can see here that you know Airdeed is, is almost double the annual cash return. Um, and as you can see, it's a much more even split of where the money's going, investors to, um, to the uh, rental company. Um, and this is because Airdeed has, is on the model of truly giving private placement fees um, to not just their private placement funds, but also to their Reg CF and Reg A um, um, offerings and the main reason why they're able to do that is um, what I'm going to show you next so why does here have to charge such high fees and why do many of these other companies have to charge such high fees it's because of this right here that's a lot of overhead um, and it's a lot of overhead from from people who probably don't even have a lot of short-term rental experience. They are probably sourcing, um, sourcing um, from companies um, that uh, provide property sourcing, and then they're just taking those properties from them and, and doing that. It's, it's super simple. Um, this Broken Bow home was just a brand new build they got. Their Salt Lake City one was also, or their, sorry, not their Park City, was also a, um, a brand new home. So um, they're charging a lot of money, um, not because they provide a lot to their investors, but because they have a lot of overhead. Um, you know, these people are all making six figures, um, so, you know, they probably have somewhere between 1.2 to 1.5, um, or sorry, 1.2 at the very, very low end, up probably to closer to about $2 million in uh, just in salaries that they're paying out. And um, I can tell you, most of this is overkill. Um, you really, you need 
a real estate, head of real estate acquisitions, you need, um, which really should basically be kind of the founder and CEO if the founder and CEO has any real knowledge of short-term rentals. Um, if you're doing in-house, you'll need a property manager. If not, then that would be outsourced. And you, um, you can have capital markets if you're pursuing f additional funds, but that's, that's, you know, not really reg a that's that's more going after you know these uh family offices and stuff like that and, and other um private funds and then maybe an investment investment operations person um who really should be bundled um with a um investor relations so it really should be investor um operations and uh relations um and that's really all you should have um you know the the design um, should be outsourced to a Airbnb firm or to an Airbnb designer. Um, the hosting can be outsourced. If it's brought in-house, then yeah, you'd have the property manager. But outside of that, many of these people are not actually useful. Um, they, they're not needed, but what I've seen in the fractional rental space um, is these companies over-hire because of a lack of skills in short-term rental um, analysis operation. Um, so they hire a bunch of people who maybe have um, those big name um, past employers so that they can you know, push that out into the private investment world to try to get additional funds. So that's a little breakdown there of this Broken Bow property. Um, like I said, I would expect this property for the people who invested to get around that, you know, 2.3%. Um, you may get a little bit higher. Um, you know, one of the big things about these fractional rental companies is they really, if they if they have their marketing together, and let me see, do, does here have a marketing person, head of product? Okay, yeah, so they, they don't even have a marketing person on here, um, so they may outsource their marketing, head of product, whatever the heck that is, I don't even know. It sounds pretty much like head of real estate since their product is real estate, but I'm not gonna get into how other people operate their companies. Um, but yeah, so um, if, if these fractional companies do it right, then they're using their investors to help market as well. Um, but you know, again, that's gonna be a very case-by-case -case basis. So. If you did invest in this broken boat property, you should expect somewhere around a, maybe two to three percent if you're lucky um, return. And uh, just know, and you can pat yourself on the back that you um, contributed to uh, um, about almost forty fifty thousand dollars a year to uh, the Here.co um, company bottom line. So I know that probably doesn't make you feel better, but that's sadly how uh, many of these companies operate that um, that aren't following the spirit of what Reg A, uh, Regulation A offerings are supposed to be. Um, so thanks, I appreciate it guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit us up and uh, we can discuss anything and um, you know give you guys some advice. So thanks.